Hey everyone, in my last video I unboxed the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber. It's been running for four or five days, I've been messing around with it, but I think it's still too early for a deep dive. But what I'd like to do in this video is give you some first impressions and talk about some teething problems which I had getting it all set up, which some of you may find useful. So if I jump over to the browser, you can see the Cloud Gateway Fiber. It is a gateway, it is a router or a router, as Norl has pointed out. I am from the UK. And it's a nice, it's a nice little device where they display at the front four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, and then we've got three 10G ports as well. Now, what I will say about the initial setup is that on paper, it should be very simple. They've got a Unify app and you know it should connect to, etc. But I had issues with it and looking online, other people had issues with it as well. Now, when you're on the specifications page, it links to this manual. And I had to take a, a kind of second look because it feels like you've bought something from Ikea. This is what they show you. And that, you know, might help when getting set up. But when it comes to actually connecting the device, it just says connect to the 10G SFP plus port or the 10G RG45 port, and then it says download the Unify app. Now, this is where it kind of broke down for me, and this is where it became an issue because I followed that and I connected to the WAN port. You can see this 10 gigabit Ethernet RG45 port. That is how I connected it initially. It's got the WAN kind of world symbol on it, so that's how I connected to it. But the Unify app would not recognize it. And I was connecting on my, uh, this PC here, and the, the IP is 192.168.11. That's your UI dashboard. That's how you access it. And I, I couldn't get access to the Cloud Gateway Fiber. It just wouldn't recognize it. And I was like, what is going on? I can't get it through my PC. I can't get it through my phone. What's going on? Eventually, I, I found a Reddit post that pointed out that just take it out the one port and put it into one of the other ports. So I moved it from the 10 gigabit one port to, I think it was port three, and it connected instantly. It connected instantly via the browser on my PC, and then eventually it was recognized here as well. Now, that was just an initial teething problem, but I will say that did annoy me because this is, you know, it was, it's a couple of hundred pounds to buy this, and they're obviously trying to go for this whole kind of Apple simplified system, but at the end of the day, that is not good enough as a manual. And yes, they've got some documentation within the app, but I have no idea why when you connect initially, you know, for a brand new device, why connecting to the WAN port doesn't work and why connecting to a, one of the LAN ports did. That seems like a really buggy software issue that should not be in there for a product like that. So that was a little bit annoying, but eventually I did get set up. And this is when things get a lot better. So this is the dashboard and I, I'm not going to show you everything, but I will say that the dashboard is lovely. It's definitely, you know, one of the things that attracted me, attracted me to Ubiquiti. And I do agree with some comments that I've had already saying that, you know, when it comes to firewalls and different things, there's not enough options. It, it, it's kind of lacking in some areas. And I do have to dive deeper in that and figure out what is lacking. But I must admit the UI is awesome here. There's, there's so much flexibility as to what you could do. And, you know, the whole teleport thing as well is great as well. I find that very useful where you can use the Unify app and just kind of like tunnel in and then get access to uh, the Cloud Gateway Fiber. And that was actually very useful for me because I'll talk about this in a bit, but I did have some downtime due to a different issue, but I could still connect to the Cloud Gateway Fiber by using my phone. You kind of teleport in via the app. But I must say that the whole UI here is really nice. And, you know, some of it might look gimmicky, but if you look at the, the topology uh, screen here, this might look a little bit gimmicky, but I've actually found this very useful because it's allowed me to see what was connected and what wasn't. And for the problem that I had, that became very useful. You know, it maybe just looks a little bit gimmicky, but bear in mind, I'm coming from a, a switch that looks something like that. So yeah, you know, it looks great. Uh, I'm very impressed with the whole UI and you can see all the devices that connect and when you do get a, a device you can then you know add a fixed IP address etc. Now when I first set it up I added fixed IP addresses for like a dozen or so products 
different devices like switches and different things. But then I moved it and, and that's where I changed it to dynamic. Now I'm going to change most of them back to static IPs just you know for accessing dashboards, etc. But yeah, this is um this is a very nice dash. It's really really, really nice. And obviously I've not connected Wi-Fi points, etc. Now, when I was talking about teething problems, I had that initial setup problem. I don't know why it's there, but it's quite annoying that it's there. But once you get past that, just you know, try one of the other ports. You should get connected. You should be able to set it up. But you can see there's some downtime there. And I did get a lot of downtime, but it wasn't the cloud gateway fiber. It was my own home network setup. Now, just to kind of give you a background as to what happened. I initially set it up down here because I've got a 10 gigabit QNAP switch down here. So really good 10 gigabit switch. And the reason I set it up here is because I can connect my PC easily. You know, for setting it up, it's just easier to run a cable to this PC. So I set it up here, everything was, was perfect, but then I moved it down to my patch panel. And that's where I started to run into problems. Now, the problem was that it looked like a DHCP issue. It looked like this kind of weird redirect loop where it wasn't allocating IP addresses to any device connected to the Mikrotech switch. And I must admit, I was really perplexed by this. I was baffled by it. And the reason being that I'd never run into this problem before. Plus, it was quite confusing that, you know, everything was working fine when it was upstairs up here. But when I moved it downstairs, that's when all the problems arose. Now, if I jump back to the browser, I'll kind of talk about what's going on here. So what happened was that previously I was connecting the cloud gate uh, cloud gateway fiber to my QNAP switch. But when I moved it downstairs, the first switch I was connecting to was the Mikrotech switch. And this is where the problem was. And it turns out it wasn't the cloud gateway fiber. It wasn't the ubiquity issue. It was how these switches were communicating with each other. Now, a lot of you guys who watch my channel are incredibly knowledgeable, probably more knowledgeable than me, but I'm sure you've heard of the term link aggregation. Now I'd heard, heard the term and I'd used it before, but link aggregation is something I always want to use. I want to have multiple connections between switches for redundancy. You know, so if an ethernet cable is broken, there's an issue there, then you're still going to get a connection. So it's quite good for redundancy. But when you're connecting two switches directly to each other, you run the risk of a redirect loop. And that's the problem that I ran into. And I thought it was a DHCP issue, and then I thought it was the Mikrotech switch, but it wasn't. The issue was that it was set up correctly on my Mikrotech switch, but on the QNAP switch, it wasn't set up by default. But you can see here on the link aggregation page, I've got lag link ag aggregation group, combines multiple point-to-point -point links into a single high throughput data link. And seven and eight here are effectively the two 10 gigabit uh, patch panel cables that run all the way up the house into this office. And I wanted to set it up this way into this switch so that I had two 10 gigabit connections rather than one. So once I set this up here, everything worked fine. So what's happening here is that this is community, communicating with the switch and you can see the, the partner there, there's an active connection. You can set it up as passive, but active works better. And it's set up now and there's two links from the QNAP switch to the Mikrotech and back and forth. And that's kind of how I want you to set it up. Now that that's all set up, it's all good. But that was a really hard problem for me to diagnose just because it's not a feature I'd used before. So it was not a problem that I saw before. And the DHCP kind of error messages that we're seeing were kind of throwing me off the scent. But it's all set up now, it's all working great. And my cloud gateway fiber is working very well. And as you saw there, the UI is really nice. Now, I am going to adjust my network more, but the next addition to the network is the Ubiquiti USW aggregation switch. This is a, an eight port SFP plus switch, so eight 10 gigabit ports. And this is going to do what those switches were doing. This is going to be the very first switch that comes out of the cloud gateway fiber. It's going to be the main switch. It's got a switching capacity of 160 gigabits per second. So this is going to connect to the other switches, well, the Mikrotech switch and any other switches in the future. And everything's going to be running through that. 
I hope you've all enjoyed listening to my first impressions and setup problems with the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, posting a comment and subscribing to the channel because in my next video, I will take a closer look at the Ubiquiti USW aggregation switch. So thanks for watching and until next time, take care.